Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope you're all well and uh, feeling comfortable at this time. Today, I'll be talking about the Huawei string inverter design uh, in how to uh, optimize the design configuration using a Huawei inverter. Today's presentation uh, will be broken down into several different topics. Uh, first of all, we'll start with the subject of how to design a PV string. Then looking at one of the factors of when designing the string uh, in regards to the DC to AC ratio, which is a substantial impact on yield and, and uh, the overloading capacity, depending on the location. We'll then talk about inverter string design, um, looking at uh, very aggressive DC to AC ratios and how that can be achieved uh, with options of Y connectors um, and a long string design. So without any further delay, um, I will get the slide started. And in the first subject, uh, we'll be talking about how long uh, in terms of your modules per string is a suitable uh, calculation. So let's follow uh, the two IEC standards, which is the 62548 and the 62738. Now, both of these standards are uh, applicable to the application of solar and uh, configuring the minimum and specifically the maximum number of modules that can be connected in a string. So as we understand, uh, each PV module uh, is having a voltage uh, a value and that voltage value, the more strings in parallel that you're connecting up, that string length will become higher and higher. So depending on the geographical location um, and the startup voltage and the operating uh, voltage of the inverter, specifically the MPPT window, uh, you need to be ensuring that the string voltage is suitable uh, and specifically in areas where the temperature can achieve quite low, uh, you do need to consider that minimum temperature value into the equation itself. So the standard um, and the calculation is shown on the screen. Um, and in regards to giving a example, uh, depending whether you're considering a 60 cell PV module, or a 72 cell uh, PV module, uh, there is several factors that need to be extracted uh, from the module uh, de documentation. So let's start with, for example, a 60 cell module, uh, a slightly outdated uh, 280 watt PV module. You can see that the uh, VMPP um, and also the temperature coefficient VOC value that is taken there as well. Based on those two parameters, uh, you can then calculate exactly um, how many modules in a string can be calculated. So for example, uh, with a 10 degrees as being the minimum, uh, we are able to comfortably connect 24 PV modules in a string. Now, if temperatures are getting as low as minus 10, for example, then that would be limited to 22 PV modules per string. So what is uh, DC to AC ratio uh, in the calculation uh, when you're considering your PV design? So there's uh, a definition um, of the uh, nominal peak power at STC uh, divided by the inverted total rated output power. So you can see here uh, with a DC to AC ratio of using the 280 watt PV modules, 24 modules um, uh, in a string and 20 strings uh, into one inverter uh, divided by the 100 kilowatts uh, output of the nominal uh, inverter output uh, that would achieve around 1.34 so what we normally call that is 34 percent oversizing ratio on the inverter now this is based on the stc conditions uh, and that's typically around 25 degrees now Typically, depending on the geographical location, these DC to AC ratios are normally uh, different uh, in different uh, geographical locations. So for example, um, in the Southern Africa uh, market, uh, you would have a specific DC to AC ratio. And you can see here from Germany, um, a 100 to 750 kilowatt system, uh, rooftop application would have around 750 kilowatts DC. So very comfortably, six of the 100 KTL M1 inverters would be suitable uh, and providing you between 1.1 to 1.3% uh, oversizing ratio. <laughs> so 
so we've got a couple of other examples in Latin America, uh, along with Asia Pacific, um, and specifically, what is the oversizing ratios that are normally selected. So you can see here, uh, projects in Japan are having quite an aggressive o uh, AC to DC ratio of 1.8 to 3. Now, in respect to different inverters, I'm going to select the 60 KTL uh, M0 inverter uh, for this reference case. Um, and once again, the 280 watt PV module. So this particular inverter has 12 strings um, and you're connecting uh, around uh, 22 PV modules per string uh, with a 280 watt PV module providing you around 123% AC to DC ratio. Now, in terms of looking into uh, detail of the inverter string design itself, uh, let's go into the next, next aspect of how is it best configured into the inverter. So the principle of the inverter string design, uh, there's many ways uh, due to the multiple MPVTs and the multiple uh, strings that you have uh, per inverter. So we're going to be uh, giving you an example, uh, as you can see on the screen, with the 100 KTL M1 inverter um, and connecting the same number of modules um, in terms of in total capacity. So let's look at 129% uh, oversizing ratio on this inverter. So on the left hand side of the screen, what you'll be able to see is 17 strings in total uh, with 20 PV modules per string. Um, and as we know with the 100 KTL inverter, it has a total of 20 inputs, 10 independent NPPTs. However, we will be only using 17 out of the 20 strings. On the right hand side of the screen, uh, you can see option number two, which is 20 strings using all of the inputs of the inverter. However, reducing uh, the number of PV modules per string, which is 17 in total. Now, both of these options are able to be adopted and used on the inverter. However, as you can see on the left hand side, we've made a mark of preferred solution. Now, the reason for that is having 20 PV modules per string would be a more favorable and more suitable string voltage uh, to be within the MPPT range of the inverter. So what we would find is the left hand side would be uh, able to generate more power for a longer period of our operation uh, over its life expectancy compared to with the uh, solution with 17 PV modules per string. And the reason for that is being more within the op optimum MPPT range and reducing the use of the DC to DC booster. Now, the next aspect um, is in regards to uh, a further increase in your DC to AC ratio. Now, depending on the type of inverter, uh, there is several different applications that this can be adopted. Uh, one of them, for example, with the residential inverters, uh, the two to six KTL, um, or the 3 to 10 KTL inverters, uh, we can look at using the optimizers, uh, which will uh, enable to increase the string voltage further. Uh, and with the 12 to 20 KTL, uh, the option of also using the optimizers uh, to further increase the DC to AC ratio. So let's look at that in a bit more detail, um, in specifically the Y connectors. So there is uh, Y connectors that are available from Huawei and there is third party Y connectors. Um, and these Y connector uh, will have inline fuses um, in the positive um, and specifically the reason for uh, the inline uh, fuse that is required um, is that that will then protect the inverter due to going uh, above the parameters of the inverter itself. However, still adopting a more aggressive DC to AC ratio. So this is normally used where there is uh, low uh, wattage PV modules and you are trying to maximize uh, the DC to AC ratio on your inverter, which may have less number of inputs than uh, preferred from the EPC perspective. So this is a configuration of how this should be uh, connected. You can see the recommendation uh, there in regards to the left hand side of the screen. Uh, where the Y branch connectors um, are configured in the correct manner with the inline fuse um, on the positive uh, point um, of the connection of the inverter. 
Now, in specifically, uh, in order to calculate the fuse rating um, of the Y connector, specifically, you need to extract the information from the module data sheet. So the maximum series fuse rating um, is a parameter which is normally available from the PV modules data sheet. You extract that and select that correct fuse um, to ensure that when you are using the Y connector, the inline fuse is incorporated to the rating of the PV module, along with uh, keeping to the parameters of the PV inverter as well. So, in terms of long string design and specifically with the residential application, um, we have uh, several different options. And as you can see on the screen, um, there is several different orientations uh, of the PV uh, string itself. Um, and in order to uh, maximize the DC to AC ratio um, of, for example, 200%, uh, you can connect more PV modules per string. Now, the benefit of the Y connector itself um, is you are able to extend uh, the PV modules uh, per string because the voltage is lower uh, than a typical uh, string without optimizers. So you can see um, the two options, uh, which is 19 PV modules per string, um, which is uh, connected up to a inverter, which is uh, between uh, three to 10 KTL. Uh, and that will have a capacity of a maximum around 19 PV modules, depending on the PV module itself. Now, with the optimizers, uh, and that is connected to each PV module itself, uh, you can further increase the PV modules per string. So rather than 19, you can increase by approximately uh, a third more um, onto the string length itself, and still be within the tolerance um, of parameters of the inverter, uh, and safety factor uh, that you are uh, achieving a more aggressive DC to AC ratio of, uh, on some cases, around 200%. Now, there is two uh, options on how to do this. Uh, you can see on the left-hand side uh, with the, without the optimizer, um, where there is two independent MPBTs uh, and two strings that are connected uh, into the uh, inverter. Now, on the right-hand side, uh, what is happening is you are further increasing more PV modules per string. The string length is longer, and that would then provide you a, a more longer uh, string design of an AC to DC ratio of 1.75. That's it on my slides. Uh, thank you very much all for listening. And if you have any further questions, then please do feel free to leave in the chat box, and I, we will be uh, more than happy to get those questions answered during uh, the chat session. Thank you very much and thank you, bye-bye.